Hi, this is Rob. While working my way through the Cloud Resume Challenge, I've been using AWS SAM CLI to build and provision my infrastructure as code. In this video, I'll walk you through creating a SAM template for a DynamoDB table, a Lambda function written in Python, and an API Gateway API to expose the Lambda function. I'll also show you how to test locally, which will require you to have Docker installed on your machine, as well as test using Postman after the infrastructure has been deployed and provisioned on AWS. I have videos on how to install the SAM CLI and Docker desktop on a Mac, so I'll provide links to them in the description below in case you're interested. To get started, I've created a developers user group in IAM and provided the necessary permissions. I then created a user and added the user to the developer group then created a profile for the user in AWS Vault on my local machine. Now I'll execute the SAM init commit to initialize a SAM project. I'll select one for an AWS quick start template, one for hello world example. Here I'll say no because I'm not sure which version of Python SAM uses by default. And then I'll enter 14 for Python 3.8 because that's what I have on my development machine. I'll select zip for the package type, disable tracing for the demo, give the project a name, and wait for it to clone. Now I'll change directory into the demo app folder and execute the SAM build command to prepare the template for deployment. Now I'll execute AWS Vault exec, passing my user profile name, indicate I don't want a session, and then run SAM deploy guided. I'll give the stack a name, select the default reason from my profile, say no to confirm changes for this demo, yes allow SAM to create an IAM role, no, that's fine. Enter, enter, and enter. All right, so it looks like the stack was successfully deployed. So let's jump over to CloudFormation. Here's the stack with create complete. We click into it and then go to resources. We'll see the list of resources that were created during the deployment. And if we jump over to Lambda, we see our Lambda function and the default code that was provided in our API gateway which exposes a hello route triggered on a GET request. So if I go back to Lambda and test the default implementation, we see we get a successful response returned. And if I run a test in API Gateway, we see this was successful as well. And if I launch Postman and do a GET request to the endpoint, we see a status of 200 OK and a message returned in the body. So right now the default infrastructure for the Hello World template is deployed and working properly. Now what we want to do is create a DynamoDB table for ourselves and then go in and modify the existing template so the function that we create will interact with the database and it will all be exposed through API Gateway. So here we're in the DynamoDB service, and if I click on tables, we see we obviously don't have any tables created. Now, I could go in here in the console and create a table for us, but because we're working with SAM and we're building our infrastructure as code, I'll jump into VS Code and open the template YAML file. And in the resources section, I'll paste in the code we need for a DynamoDB table. So here I'm creating a resource named demo dynamo db table. 
Its type is a DynamoDB table. I'll give it a name of demo app table, an attribute of ID, which is a string, and the key schema type will be a hash. So if I save this and go back to the terminal, I'll execute SAM build to build the template. And then SAM deploy again, this time without the guided flag. And now we see the demo app stack has an update in progress, but it looks like the update failed because the user doesn't have permission. So let's jump back into IAM, go to the developers group, permissions, and add a permission for DynamoDB. And let's deploy again. Updates in progress. And the update was successful. Just check here. Update complete. Go back to DynamoDB and refresh. And now we have our table. All right, so let's jump back into our template file and go down to the hello world function. And we see the code URI property is pointing to the hello world directory. So if I open hello world, in the handler, we see it's pointing to app, which is the app pi file, and then the Lambda handler. So let's open app. And what I'm gonna do is replace the default code with some custom code. So here I'm importing JSON and the Bodo3 SDK for Python. I'm creating a variable DynamoDB, which is a DynamoDB resource type, and then a variable for table, which points to the DynamoDB variables table, passing the table name in. In the Lambda handler, I'm creating a variable for response, which will use the table called the getItem method and look for an item with the key of ID. Then I have a visit count variable, which is going to be equal to the value that's in that ID field. And then the put item method is going to increment the counter in the table by one and ultimately return with a status code 200 and the visit count in the body. Here I'm just setting the cores headers to allow everything for the demo. So I'll save this. Then I'll jump back into the template, go to the properties section for the hello world function and paste in the code for a DynamoDB CRUD policy pointing to the demo app table table name, which is defined in the demo DynamoDB table. I'll save this, go back to the terminal, do a SAM build and deploy. Now, if I jump into Lambda and click on our function, we see the updated code. So now I'll run a test and we get an error in response. And that's actually because I don't have any data in my table yet. So I did create the table, but I didn't put any data in it. And normally I would do that through a post request exposed via API gateway, and then we would use the Lambda function to insert into the database. But here, what I'm going to do is create an item, then jump back over to Lambda and run the test again. And now we see we have a successful response with the value of one in the body. And if we go back over to the table and run a scan, now our counter is equal to one. Let's go back to Lambda run a test again. Now we're up to two, confirm in the database, and we're up to two. Now let's bring Postman back up again and send the get request to the API gateway. We see we get a status 200 and a response coming back is a three, which if you go back to the table one more time, our counter is now three. All right, so we've made some pretty good progress here. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how to test your Lambda function locally using SAM. So in order to do this, as I said previously in the video, you need to have Docker installed on your machine. I have a video showing you how to install and configure Docker, so I'll add that to the links below. But for now, I'll launch Docker Desktop on my Mac, 
and you see I currently have no containers or images. So now I'll jump back into the terminal. I'll execute a SAM build and an AWS vault exec SAM local invoke passing the name of the Lambda function. Now it's trying to spin up a Docker container, but it doesn't have the image. So it's pulled down the image and you can see that in Docker. And if we go back to the terminal, we'll see that the test was successful with a status code of 200. And in the body, we have the value of four. And one more scan of the table shows our current counter of four. And that concludes this video of working with the AWS SAM CLI. I hope you found it useful.